Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Marilyn Shannon, and this is the Breaking Free Show, and I'm so happy you're here today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying the weather wherever you are. Here it's kind of uh, sunny but cold, so I'm in getting ready, and I'm in all my winter clothes. It's hard to believe that it's come so quick because it feels like just yesterday it was warm and sunny and we were swimming outside. So thank you so much for being here. Remember, anytime during the show, you are more than welcome to call in. Anytime the mood moves you, you have a comment, a question, a suggestion, whatever it is, 919-518-9773, or you can come in on Skype, and that would be voice, not video, so don't worry. You can come in on computers, 2K voice, that's computers, that's plural, with the number with an S, then the number 2K voice, and then we have a chat. Uh, you can put your name, nickname, whatever you like under our video, and come in there as well and communicate and just enjoy being together. So I want to tell you that my guest today that I was going to be interviewing um, does documentaries. And unfortunately, it won't be here today because of an illness in his family and something he has to take care of. And that doesn't normally happen, but we are live, so things do happen. But there's always plenty of things for us to communicate about, share, talk about, discover, question, and just kind of hang out together. So that's what we're going to do. So please stay tuned. Let me say hi to Amnon because he's my sidekick today, even more than normal. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How was your weekend? It was it was okay. I mean, it's kind of gloomy, but yeah, it was kind of rainy fine. and gloomy. Huh? Did a lot of stuff in the office. Oh, good. Did you clean up yeah, some stuff? Well, clean, fix, organize. Um, yeah. Getting ready for something? No. Just doing. Just needed to be done. Good, good. To, well, it feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, I love cleaning up. I love, I love going to um, like Goodwills. I love going to the dump. Oh, I love the dump. It's so freeing. <laughs> I do. I love taking things to the dump that nobody needs and nobody wants and things. So all is how is, I know that you do a show every Sunday, but is there anything that you want to fill us in before I get on with things? Mm, no, there's really. On there's technology, nothing. nothing, nothing going on in the world. No shifts, no changes, no news, no, no new things, no new technology, no old technology, new. No, nothing. There's, okay. It's nothing. It was. Things have been nothing for a little while, haven't they? Right. I mean, it's good. It's it's stabilizing. It's stabilizing. I mean, there's a lot to talk, but it's highly technical that okay. nobody nobody want to really hear. Do. Okay. Other than, but if you techies. do, but if you are a techie and you do want to hear what's going on, that's highly techie, then you will want to listen to Amnon Show, which is on Sundays, and it's at nine a.m. Right. Nine, nine to eleven. Nine to eleven, and right here on this channel, you can tune in. So today there's several things I want to talk about. And I know I'm not the only one dealing with things because I know that if I'm dealing with it, other people are dealing with it too. So many of you who are, have been, uh, you know, watching our show for a long time, maybe watch other shows on our channel, uh, will recall, uh, you know, a, a dear friend that was on, the, on our sh uh, channel, Debbie Brooke. Well, I got this lovely, lovely, lovely present from Debbie's daughter-in-law and son the other day, and I must share it. I have not seen it before, and it was just so cool. And it's a movement. It's called the gratitude movement. And, you know, I saw it and I went, oh, another gratitude thing. Because I, you know, I feel like I am in gratitude and that I am grateful for things. But this really tipped the scale. And it's even pulled my attention more towards what gratitude is. So I want to tell you what it is. And it was just a really cool thing. And it's a really simple thing, but it's really cool. So it's a glass jar. It's like a, a, a jar. It has a little bottom to it and a cork top. And across the glass, it says gratitude in a beautiful script. And then along with it came these two boxes. It's, you know, for every day in the week is a card. And, you know, they're embossed in bronze. And they are beautiful. And you take them out and you write whatever you're grateful for. And then you put it in the jar. And so there's one for every day of the year. And when I saw it, I went, ah, that's nice. Well, I have a little ritual going on now. Every night at the end of my day, 
I go to my jar and I pick up a card and I write. It's kind of like a summing up of my day and what I'm grateful for. And it's so interesting to be that focused on gratitude where, where I thought I already was, but the ritual of, of writing something every single day about something that I'm grateful for and I'm going to do it every single day of the year is really an interesting kind of process, awareness, an awakening. And the things that I've been writing about so far, and it's only been a couple of days, like this week, yesterday I wrote patience. I'm really grateful. Even if I don't have patience, I'm grateful for the slit of patience that I do have because I know that from the slit of patience, the awareness of something that I was patient for or am patient about is going to kind of breed more patience. It's going to grow my patience because I'm focusing on the feeling that I had in that minute minute or that minute second that was micro-focused on patience. Because I can't tell you every day, all day, I am patient. It's one of those things that I am currently working on. And there's another, and I'll talk to you about that too. So I felt patience in a particular situation and I acknowledged it. And so it's now in my consciousness. It's out here. It has a word. It has a form. It kind of has a beingness to the event, to the situation. And now patience seems like something that's more in my routine more in my material every day in what I'm doing. It's kind of like when something comes up that I want to just like zoom right through because I'm a zoomer. Let me tell you, I'm a rocket ship. Sometimes I know I'm going quick through something. I kind of take a seat back, a, a step back, and I'll go, okay, let me bring on my patience and see what happens. And a lot of times I have, I don't, all I have to do is be patient. And whatever it is takes care of itself. So that was one thing. Judgment is a big thing. And judgment, let me tell you something, my loves out there. Judgment is, ooh, that'll be hair on your chest. Because there's a lot sometimes to be judgmental about. And it's really interesting what happens when you start to, you know, kind of go to the PhD school of being non-judgmental. There's a lot of work to be done. I don't know about you, but it's, 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 it creeps up. All of a sudden, you think everything's going great. And all of a sudden, you realize, damn, I'm being judgmental here. Let me, let me again, take a step back. Let me look at this. Let me kind of examine it. What's, what am I being judgmental about? Because the more judgmental we are, first of all, the more uncomfortable we are about everything. The more we see the negatives the more we see the differences in each other, the, the, the less we feel like we fit in. I mean, what are you going to fit into if you're judgmental about so many things? Anyway, it's been a very, that was really interesting. And I want to talk more about that because I've had some really extraordinary kind of life lessons that have been in my face about being judgmental. So 919-518-9773. Please call me if anything that I'm saying is, is, is touching a chord you agree with, you don't agree with, you like, you don't like, whatever it is, I would love, because no judgment, <laughs> let me laugh to myself, no judgment here, because I don't, I don't want to be judgmental, I want to grow. So if you have anything to add to what I'm saying, call in 919-518-9773 or join me in the chat. You are welcome to do that as well. So several big lessons in being judgmental or not. So one of them is, some of you may know that I am writing a series of books. And I think one of the, the kingpins behind each of the books is, is our awareness of being judgmental and of getting over it. And so, you know, in just one afternoon, the title, listening to the hearts of men, listening to the hearts of twins, listening to the hearts of millennials. And now I'm working on opioid, people impacted by opioid addiction. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me. I'm going to have to take a drink of water because every time I talk so much and it's only me talking, I'm going to have to sip. Hold on. So I have had the pleasure of interviewing um, mothers, family members, other family members, uh, individuals that are addicted. And it's just, it's a sacred space when you are interviewing individuals like this. I mean, it's a sacred space. You're, you're creating this relationship uh, with people who are struggling, and it's been extraordinary. Well, several, I guess a couple of months ago, I was introduced to this lovely woman who I come to find out is the girlfriend of a gentleman who is currently in conflict with his addiction. When I say conflict, I mean he's on a shot that blocks the opioid. He's on he's addicted to heroin. Takes the shot, but then he's figured out when the shot is like kind of dissipating. So between the third and fourth week he would take at the fourth week he would take the shot again. He's figured out how to kind of play with the time so that he can shoot up before he actually takes the shot again and get some effect from heroin. Now, he's not going to get the same effect as he would if he, if he wasn't on the shot, so, but he gets some kind of, he, he says it's reminiscent of actually shooting up with the heroin. So she, I started interviewing her and I'm like, oh my God, this woman is just lovely. And I want to shake through the phone. I want to go, what are you thinking? I want to shake her up and go, what are you thinking? How can you be in love with someone? How can you love someone who is on heroin and what, and just up and down and doped up and zoned out and, you know, spending money, crazy money for his habit for years and years. How could you love somebody like this? I just want to say that I want to do my thing and coach her away from him. But I didn't do that because that's not my job. As an author, I am there to take, to receive the information and to share it to the best way I can to interpret and to put it into a story form and share it with all of you. So you too will understand what whoever it is that I'm writing about or interviewing. So when you think about, let's say the men's book, there's a lot of judgment men make about men and, you know, women make about men, you know, men make about themselves. So part of the impression from the book is men have emotion. They're not hard like stone and, you know, a lot of less judgment when you understand men. Same thing with the twins, you know, millennials. Oh, I'm going to tell you about millennials. So with this particular one, there's a lot of judgment around let's say, with this woman and having a relationship with this guy, I had a lot of judgment. But when I listened to her story, I realized I had this big light bulb moment. Everybody deserves to be loved. Now, I can say that to myself and, you know, on some level believe it. But then when thrown into a situation with a woman who's just, her guts are coming out because she never knows where her boyfriend is, If he's coming home, if he's coming home drugged, if he's going to be ODing, what she never knows. I can't imagine. However, she loves him and he loves her. And, you know, the way it is today, an opioid, an addict is in every neighborhood. The the numbers are staggering. The crisis is beyond epidemic. The epidemic is beyond a crisis. It's everywhere. So to be thinking for one second that people are not being loved or loving that are addicted or addict or, or, or a loving somebody that's addicted or somebody who is addicted is, I mean, I'd be crazy to think that because there's so many. That was an amazing awakening for me that, oh my God, of course they're everywhere. Of course, they're they're in every economic, socioeconomic category. They it it doesn't know color, it doesn't know age, 
It doesn't know anything. It doesn't know blue collar or white collar. It's everywhere. It does not have a boundary. So that was an awakening for me. So everybody deserves to be loved. Any marginal human being, marginal group, everybody deserves to be loved. And if anything is going to heal us, it's going to be the act of love. It's going to be being in love, feeling love, doing love, knowing love, sharing love, understanding love, you name it, put an additive to it. It is going to be in love. So then, finally, after weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, I call him Jay. That's not his real name, but it is an initial for his name. And we're, we're kind of going to give them initials because S, the woman, has a, girl, has a, a child. And we, we want to protect the child from any kind of anything. So I'm calling him Jay and her S. Finally, Jay consents to allowing me to interview him. And you have to understand, I have been looking for someone for this book that is currently using. And it has not been something that's been easy. I have put it out there. I've asked. I've been on Facebook. I've asked friends. And people know people, but they just have not wanted to talk about it to the extent that... Uh, you need to talk about it, you know, when you're going to be interviewed for a book to be able to, so, so to be able to share a, a person's experience who is currently using is something that I, 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 I couldn't help but want to do because when we understand who they are, maybe next time we know somebody or we, or we're just thinking about it, we will be certainly less judgmental when we kind of have an understanding that you're not a terrible person or you're not mean or you're not this, you just got caught. So I started interviewing Jay and it's been amazing because we've become friends and I really, really like these two people a lot. And I have been part of his month of where he took, where he, where he didn't take the, sh where he was like between the shot and where he used, and then he was took the shot. And then for the left, so he, he didn't, I mean, he, he used, then he took the shot. Then he's today is the next time for the shot. And this has been the first time this last three and a half weeks has been the first time that he has ever abstained on his own. And he has not shot up between shots and he's, and he's on his own. I mean, he's, you know, been without before, but that's because he's been in rehab or because he has been in jail. Never, never on his own. This is the first time. And I've been interviewing him and really like hearing this man talk. And it's opened up and busted through any judgment I ever had about somebody who has, is addicted and who, who just can't get off. I mean, why can't they just stop? That's what I would say. Why can't they just stop? Well, after listening to him, I understand why he can't just stop and why it's been so hard and so interesting. So, you know, these books really do, or not just my books, but when you hear these stories about people you really can pass through your judgment when you put yourself in their place, even for just a few seconds, even for just a little bit. And, you know, it's just fascinating when you get to sit back and you listen to people's stories and you really kind of, hmm, you connect with them there. That is where our humanity lies. So I've really had an extraordinary time playing with judgment. So, you know, everybody, no matter how great you are, we all have learning to do. No matter how great you feel like you are, we all have learning to do. And no matter how behind and, and bad you feel, you are not alone because we all have learning to do. And if one thing I have realized, especially in the last couple of months, because of being with, you know, people in my books and in general, we are not, you are not alone. Everybody has a story and everybody's story. I don't know. I wouldn't want everybody else's story either. So 
You are not alone. Believe me, no matter what is going on, you are not alone. I will say that over and over and over again. So many of you also may have had the pleasure of watching Tatiana's show on our, on our channel and may also be aware that she has passed away. And it has been a very difficult time uh, in her, for her family, for her friends, for all of us that have known and loved her. You know, it's been a really difficult time. Yesterday was her memorial service. And it, um, I, along with two other friends of Tatiana's, kind of put it together. And one of them has a horse farm. And we know Tatiana loved nature and, you know, being outside and enjoying, I don't know, just enjoying it. And so we did it at this horse farm. Oh, my goodness gracious. It was like magic. I mean, seriously, and I'm not just saying it. It was, it was really magic. I mean, 60 people showed up, and we had a beautiful circle. People were sharing lovely thoughts, memories. Her mother was there. Her two couple of sisters were there. Her daughter, who looks, if I swear, just like her. It was amazing. So we got to really, like, you know, you hear people's kind of rendition of others and you then when you see them for yourself it's like oh my god they don't always fit the the, the story you have to make up your own judgment <laughs> listen sorry that was a slip I don't know if I meant that you have to make up your own mind not judgment forget what I just said you have to make up your own see how pervasive this stuff comes but you know what's so great is we can grab it we can go, no, that doesn't fit anymore. I don't have to be what I was yesterday. I don't even have to be what I was this morning if I don't want to. I can change. And obviously, judgment is a part of my life, too. So, But I don't want to be judgmental. I want to be open. I, it doesn't mean that I can't like um, discern something. It doesn't mean I can't go from here to here and make a decision of what I like and what I don't like. I can do that any day of the week, but not at a judging it. I am not the judge. I am not here to say this is good. This isn't good. You're wrong. You, you, none of that. So one of the things that was so crazy yesterday, which I just have to talk about, everybody bought food. Well, not everybody. That's another word. Every. Not everybody did, but many, many people did. And it was really terrific how, how, how generous people were. And I was trying to think of what I could bring that would be yummy. Uh, wouldn't I, I don't like, like standing in the kitchen and cooking too much. I'll do it, but it's not my favorite task because I'd much rather be out in the world, you know, being with people, writing my books, coaching, you know, being on social media, being with my grandchildren, being with my children, being with my husband, talking to my mother on the phone. I'd rather be doing those things. So I really tried to hard to think of what I could bring that would be something I could do easily. So I decided Wegmans, the, this new grocery store opened up and it was a really phenomenal. If any of you out there are familiar with Wegmans, it's like the kahuna of grocery stores. It's very crowded here. And I go in and I tell myself, don't go again because it's too crowded, but I'm like addicted to it. So I decide they have the best, now, you're going to think this conversation is off, but these are the things that you figure out in, in, in your day-to-day -day life that you kind of want to go, you want to like pay attention to them because it's bizarre and I can't figure them all out myself, but they do stick out like, oh my God, Marilyn, you can't let that go by. So I decide to get chicken. They've got great chicken. They're not expensive. You know, these nice little rotisserie chickens. So I went in. And I said, I'm going to buy like six chickens because we were going to have like 60 people. And I figured, okay, six chickens. So I went over to the, I don't know, the man behind the counter. And I said, I, I need all these chickens. Can you cut them for me in eighths? You know, people, you know, you can go into places and they'll cut them for you like Whole Foods does it and, you know, whatever. So he said, yeah. So he, I go and I get lunch and come back. The chickens were destroyed. He handed them back to me in these plastic chicken bags. They were shredded. 
It's like they were like I, ready for chicken salad and mayonnaise. I'm like, I can't take this. And I stood there because there would have been a time in my life where I would have just taken the chicken and left. But, and I would have just sucked it up. But I'm like, I can't do that. This is, he didn't do it. He must have just ripped them apart instead of like using a nice knife. So I stood there and I'm like, what do I do? So I asked, and he was a very nice young guy and I didn't want to get him into trouble, but I called him over and I said, I know you did the best you could, but I can't take these chickens. They're awful. And he looked at me and he said, okay. And I was waiting for him to say something else and he didn't. And I said, well, what are you going to do with them? And he said, throw them away. And I was crushed because I, I couldn't see throwing them away. And I, and I think I made the right choice, at least for me. And I don't know if they threw them away. I said, okay. And so I had to stop and think, okay, he had a lesson here too, because if he didn't know how to cut those chickens, he shouldn't have cut them, right? Or he should ask somebody else for help. So I went over and I took six more chickens and I made a plan. This was Saturday and the memorial was yesterday and I had to be, be there at 10. And I'm like, I don't know how to cut chickens, this many chickens either, but I'm going to learn on a chicken. So <laughs> I got up really early in the morning because I like figured out it might take me an hour per chicken to cut it up. I have no idea. And I hate knives. And my husband was out of town. So I take the chicken and I cut them up, you know, and I had this big, and I did it. And I did them beautifully. I was shocked myself. And I had this big, beautiful, like, tin. And I put them all in the tin and I wrapped it with aluminum foil. They were ice cold. And I stuck them in my oven like it, like on low 200. So they would get the chill out. And when I was ready to go, I took them out and I put them on a big cookie sheet in the thing. And I took them over and I, you know, we, they actually, I didn't know this, but there was a stove in the um, kitchen in the barn and we put them in the oven and, you know, until the time was right. And, you know, the event got started and everybody started bringing food and I brought the chicken out and I put it on the table. It was the only like food food. There was salads, there was sushi, there was all kinds of cookies and cakes and all kinds of beautiful things. It was the only food food. Do you know how many people told me that they were vegetarian but could not stay away from the chicken? <laughs> I was shocked. One of Tatiana's sisters came over and she said, I don't know about that chicken. <laughs> she said, I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat. She said, but I had to have that chicken. And then somebody was over, overheard her say it to me. And she said, I heard somebody else say the same thing. It was like magic chicken. Can you believe it? It was so, I don't know. Maybe I just had a lot of love in cutting up you the chicken. Touched I touched them. There was a lot of love in the chicken. And I was just in awe of the fact that people that are vegetarian, not just semi-vegetarian, but vegetarian ate the chicken. I, I would, and and it, people loved it. It was so crazy. But if you think about the whole scenario behind just chicken, I mean, this is how funky life is. And you got to have a sense of humor in your awareness, in being alert to life. This is where you learn. This is where you, it takes the, the edge off. So when I listened backwards to the experience, I could have taken the chicken that the, the nice young guy did at Wegmans, but it was a mess. And I would have been so miserable. I mean, there were bones. I, well, how was I going to do that? So I feel like I really did the right thing for myself and in speaking up for myself and having a voice by turning down that chicken. And I, you know, I was like, oh, somebody's going to yell at me. Maybe I shouldn't take any more chicken. Maybe I should find something else to do. Maybe I can't cut the chicken. I, went I mean, I had, I can't tell you how many different conversations I had with myself. And then I took it and I'm not like I'm scared to death in the kitchen other than cooking normal things because my mother was so good in the kitchen and she didn't really say, you know, she didn't really encourage me much to um, be in the kitchen or to help her because she always could do it better. So I, I'm, I have an, a, a, you know, an insecurity, I guess, when it comes to things in the kitchen, especially with other people. Like with my husband, I'm okay. And with normal every day, you know, making chicken 
or steak or whatever. I'm like, it, it, it doesn't have to be great. But if it if there's something else involved, a party or whatever, I tend to buy food as opposed to cook it because I just don't have the confidence in myself to do it. So, t- so owning my voice to get six more chickens to being like, you know, okay with cutting them because it scared me to death. Because what happens if my chickens end up the same way his did? I'll have nothing to bring to this. It was such a learning experience. And then all these people who don't eat chicken and eat vegetarian to eat them. That's a little recap of my recap of my recap, because it's kind of sinking in. What is the lesson? And I mean, owning my voice was one. I was validated over and over again with it. I mean, and and I needed that. It, you need validation with things that you do when you step out of your comfort zone, when you step out and you do something that, you know, is different. And it gave me power and not power to hurt somebody, not power to feel better than anybody, power to feel better than me. I mean, that's what we, we need to not need. It, it's great when we can feel better and better about ourselves. And all of that just gives us power. And the more power we have, the better we feel about ourselves. And when power is coming from your heart and not from your head necessarily, but from your heart, it's power you use to help people. It's like putting, you know, fuel in a train. The more I can put in my train, the better I am with helping other people, the better I can in transporting other people. So it's such a huge thing. I can't stress it enough. And, and it really felt great. Now, not to say that the whole experience yesterday wasn't exhausting. It was. It was, you know, putting yourself out there in the service and speaking and sharing and, you know, just the whole experience was exhausting. But there was an element of peace as well. So 919-518-9773 or Computers 2K Voice. And then our chat, you're welcome to join us there and just chat with me, chat with us right there. If you have any stories about judgment, about empathy, compassion, love, chicken, anything. I mean, share your stories because, you know, I don't know, maybe my chicken story will give somebody else permission to share something too or to feel better about their chicken story. So, you know, um, these stories, I know that sounds bizarre, but it, 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 it really matters. And, you know, sometimes we learn our lessons, big lessons, the hard way with difficult things. And sometimes we learn our lessons with small things. We just, but the hard thing here's oh, here's a good learning. The hard thing about the small lesson sometimes is you have to find it. They're not that easy sometimes to locate. The big things right in your face, but the small things, you got to look for it. You got to kind of dig, you know, you got to kind of pay attention to your life and notice those, those little things all along the way. So that was that. So last week I did, two events. I had held, hosted two events uh, in relationship to my books. One was the Millennials, and I did that in North Carolina, in Greenville, North Carolina, and one was for the Twins. So the Millennials was a very interesting event because we had a, I had a panel of Millennials that I had never met before who came to speak about Millennialhood, about being Millennials, feeling, you know, feeling life as a Millennial. And we had an audience and I want to thank, you know, all the people that came. It was really interesting. And I want to tell you, Steve Hand, Mm -hmm. that um, is the area director, owner, slash whatever for BNI, which is a networking organization, uh, Business Networking International. And he is the man on the whole eastern portion of North Carolina. I didn't know this, but he's a lovely man. I like him anyway. I like him. And he and I have had lots of communication together over the years because I am the founder of a networking organization for women, but we have a lot of respect for each other and there's no competition, right? No judgment there. 
So he sent a note to his uh, main guy in Greenville telling him about the event. And I didn't know this. And, it, and he showed up. And I was so honored that Steve did that. It was such a lovely, lovely gesture. And, it, and you see, there are things that we do. You don't have to tell anybody. Right. He didn't have to write me and say, hey, Marilyn, you know, I wrote a letter to my my team and our chapters down there. And, you know, maybe he didn't even have to do that. It was so wonderful. So egoless because the guy showed up and I was I was flawed. I was so honored. So anyway, I want if you're listening or anybody listening from B&I or you're listening. Thank you, Steve. I did write him again, but it's good for people to know. So anyway, so he, his guy came and several people were there. was a, um, an instructor from the college came who teaches entrepreneurship. So, because there's a lot to learn from millennials. I mean, there's a lot to learn from all of us. Let's face it. There's a lot to learn from you. From me? There's a lot to learn from everybody. I'm just, yeah. a, I'm a conduit. I'm a, I'm a, like a, I'm a, I'm a spoon. I stir it up. I go to the, I stir it up. I stir up the millennials. I stir up the conversation. I'm a spoon. I don't have all the answers. Sometimes I don't even have the question. I have the spoon. So it was very interesting because they, they were very, um, they were open. They, they, they spoke about things. There were people in the audience that were asking great questions about, you know, there was a gentleman who felt very hippie-ish and, and said, you know, you're saying the same things we said as a hippie. I mean, what's the difference? It was very interesting. One of the things that I've noticed time and time again, and in particular with this group, and they were all, honestly, they were terrific, uh, was how much they enjoyed being together. I'm afraid with the news, not only is my generation and younger generations, but older than them, reading the news and making a judgment about the millennials. But millennials are making judgment about millennials. And I've said this in my book, they have bought the news. They have bought that their generation is lazy, is this, is that, you know, can't do this, can't do that, won't keep a job, all this stuff. They bought it too. And so these, I think there were six or seven of them, eight of them, when they got together and they actually had the uh, time to sit and listen to each other, talk about things that mattered. Not to say that they don't talk to each other on a regular basis, but I don't think they get into some of the conversations that was happening last week when they got to hear, and, and I was surprised, when they got to hear from each other their own perspectives, it changed their relationship with their, with their generation. And that was really unexpected. You know, I, 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 what I was hoping for, my plan, which, let me tell you something, don't always just be so controlled by your plan. I'm not. I kind of have a plan, but then I kind of like, like happen, happen. But sometimes, you know, we have a structure and we think it should be that way, but it's not. So I, you know, my intention was that whoever showed up, young, old, middle, whatever, would all get along well and would have a little more understanding of each other from person to person. But the fact that the millennials were so consumed with themselves even more than they were with the audience was really important to me. It made a big difference in how I f saw things and how I'm processing things myself and then how I feel like I wanna share things. Because all of the stuff that I learn on any kind of regular basis, I'm putting it out there. Whether I know it all or I don't, if I just know a smidgen of something and I haven't figured it all yet, I'm gonna share that smidgen because maybe you'll have the next smidgen. And if you call me at 919-518-9773 and share your smidgen, then our smidgen becomes a little more of a piece than just a smidgen. So it was really fascinating. And they couldn't have been any nicer to each other. And they say very similar things. Uh, and, every, and, and what they say, they love their families. They love their mothers. They love their fathers. They love their family in general. They want to make a difference in the world. You know, they just, they want to 
they want to learn from older generations and they say the same thing. I mean, I had the millennials here. They said the same thing that the millennials in Greenville said. It was really interesting. So, you know, I think one of the, the, the lessons that I would like for all of us to take away today, even if it's a lesson you've already taken away before from wherever you've taken it, just take it a little deeper today about getting along, about appreciating each other a little bit more, finding the good in people, even when it's hard. And let me tell you something. There are people that don't make it easy to like them. I know that. I have people in my life, too, that I struggle with, that is part of my Marilyn growth, is that I take a look at them and I go, okay, what is the redeeming quality? What is it about them that I can focus on, that I can like, and make that piece that I can like bigger than the than the pieces that I don't like, that I feel uncomfortable around. And I'm working on it. And I, it's an everyday thing. And I, I'm going to tie in my judgment. I'm going to tie in my gratitude. I'm going to tie in all of these things that help. You know, with gratitude, gratitude is an awareness that you are not alone. Gratitude Let's you know, because you got to be, you're grateful to something, right? Outside of yourself, whether it's a, a thing, a person, whatever it is, an entity of whatever shape and size and form, you're, it's, you're, it's outside of you. It's outside of, of your ego and you're being grateful for something. That's a big deal. That's a, that is a big deal. That takes a lot of the pressure off. So keep that in mind. Okay. I'm none. You're here. Have you, is anything I said wrong, you know, did anything for you? Is there anything you heard today or that you reminded you of something that you want to share? What are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> you know, listen, hold on. I have to be grateful for him because let me tell you what, because sometimes I want to like pop him in the head, but at the same time, I love him and, you know, and he does, you know, he's, he's a good, he's a good buddy. So, okay. Any, I mean, uh, is there anything, even you didn't hear, let's say you didn't hear anything I said, because maybe some things I said didn't matter. Is there anything that you are, you are acknowledging about yourself these days? Lesson you've learned, anything you can share about anything that you have acknowledged with yourself? I, I don't, I mean, I don't. Think about things like that every minute of the day. I mean, you know, nobody you're talking does. When things happen or when I need to do something, that's when I would stop and think, okay, if I do it, remember what happened over there? Remember what Marilyn was talking about? I guess I should take does that, that happen? into consideration. Does that happen? Probably. But this okay. is when I, that's this okay. is when I'm looking at, at what to learn. From other people's mistakes. I mean, I learn from other people's mistakes. That's the only way. You don't learn from what they do that's good or, um, that, uh, or their lessons. Well, everything is a lesson. You know, they always say you can do good all your life. Nobody would remember, but you screw up once, they'll never forget it. It's the same thing. It's you don't think about the good things that you learn from other people. You just do, okay, yeah, but of course. But when you because you want to do these things but when you want to do something and you think about a mistake that somebody made by doing this that's kind of like an internal conflict because here i want to do it but i don't want to mess up mm -hmm. so you don't forget these things no i wouldn't say forever it's you 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 think about it and you go on mm -hmm. So well, I couldn't yeah. sit here and tell you okay. things that I learned or that I or anything I trigger didn't. anything or even if you didn't it hear a did, word I'm saying it did not trigger anything. I mean I'm listening for every word that you. Uh, uh, well, I mean I learned not. throughout the years I learned that what you're talking about you talk from experience you know what you're talking about except when you're talking politics. No, but let's put well let's that not aside. go there because I don't want to ruin the show. Aside. But you you have good 
all around well, knowledge of the things that you're talking about. And there's a lot to learn from you. And well, when I I'm said not, before yeah. that these people wanted to learn from you, yes, people want to learn from you because a lot of people probably know that what kind of person you are and oh, say, well, thank you, know, you but, what would Marilyn do? Well, I, well, I appreciate that. And that's not why no, I was I'm, asking. I'm, and you know, I'm not yeah. saying it just to, yeah. uh, yeah, no, you know. because I mean, and I, and I very much appreciate that. And I appreciate that. I think we all learn, yeah. you know, together. I mean, if, when we observe each other and I, I, I feel like I, I could have a lot of oops in my life and I share those oops because I've been given some kind of way of expressing, you know, I'm not prolific. I don't have great big words and all that stuff. So I, when I talk, you know, I, I mean, when I'm talking, I choose words I know. Even if there's a word that I think would rep- would be all right, if I'm not sure of that word, I don't use it. Mm-hmm. I might use the same word over and over. It could be a simple word, but I know I could use it. Same thing with spelling. There are words that confuse me to continuously that I can, do not remember. Yeah, that the word continuously is hard. Uh, well, that word. <laughs> but there are words that I can't remember. Is it this one or is it this one? I just can't remember it. Thank and God so, for the internet. Thank God for spell check. Yeah. Because there are words I just don't know the right usage. And so I choose another word so not to use that word. And mm-hmm. I don't have a problem telling you. That's the difference. I don't mind sharing those things, my oops, or my I, whatever you want to call it. I mean, my... I don't want to call it lack of something, but my but, in, my what? what but I'll call? bet that at one point in your life you did. Do oh, that. oh yeah, yeah, and that's that's yes, where no the question. knowledge, that's where experience come from. A lot of people don't acknowledge Masks their oops galore. Huh? I mean, there is ta- Listen, there are times I I was very comfortable. Well, I can't say I was very comfortable because you can never be comfortable with a mask, even if you think you're comfortable. But there's plenty of ways that I have hidden in the past, and. Now, when I do something that's really good, I have to check in with myself. Is it real or is it Memorex? Like, is it real or is it a mask? And I, you know, sometimes you have to check in and go, no, this is really real. No, I really feel this way. Could you really feel this good? Yeah, this time I really feel this good. You got, sometimes you have those kinds of conversations, dialogues going on with yourself when you're learning and when you're expanding. And when you're checking in with yourself to make sure you are not numb, that you are feeling and that you're not just, you know, in the ozone. And yeah, I have no problem sharing those kinds of experiences with all of you because I feel like this is a gift that this thing is sitting in front of me and there's a little picture over there and a camera over there and I'm not over here that I feel like I can sit here and I have all this stuff that I have to share about the chicken. I mean, I just have to. And, and, you know, there's plenty of things like the chicken that happen to all of us. And the more we can share that, the more everybody will feel more comfortable. Maybe we'll have less drug addicts if people felt like they weren't alone. Maybe we would have more drug addicts if people felt like they didn't have to be, you know, this major beautiful person that is like skinny and tall and, you know, didn't have to wear boots that were wide or, you know, maybe if we all shared things about the chicken, you know, we would have a different kind of, you know, world. We would have different kind of relationships. Our children, you know, I, I, have you ever walked into, have you walked into a high school lately? Oh my God, that's, that is F scary. I mean, really, really scary walking into high schools and junior high schools. I mean, the way these kids are dressed, the way they look at you. I mean, you have got to start out early having self-confidence if you're going to walk into some of these, some of these schools. It's, it's unbelievable. So the more we can share with each other and less judgment more salvation for us all. You know, this, I mean, oh, I can't even imagine. Anyway, I've had fun today. I hope you have. 
uh, you know, I want to remind everyone that we normally have a guest sometimes on the spur of the moment. I might do the show by myself. Sometimes it's not on the spur of the moment. It's planned. And I come with a PowerPoint or I come with a particular subject in mind. And then sometimes like today at the last minute, you know, I want to honor Charles because he, you know, needs to be with his mother. And that is, you know what? You do what you got to do. And that is okay. And we'll have him come, you know, come on again in the future because he was really looking forward to coming on today. And sometimes, you know, life presents itself in a way that, you know, you just rise up to the occasion and you just trust that it's going to be okay. And that's what I did today. And the, not to say that there wasn't some yuck in the trust. There was, a, there was a, I'll tell you what, I, I, I was talking to myself in and out of coming here today. Should I do it alone? No, shouldn't I do it alone? Maybe I'll just stay home and work. Well, maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll, I can't tell you why this one out other than this was my plan for the day and I wanted to be with all of you. And so, you know, that's how it goes. So I really thank you for being here and you got my books. I got your books. Okay, got my books. I got to get a new one of these made because there's a fifth cover that I really want to show you that I really think you're going to love for the next one, which uh, after the opioid book is going to be in just one afternoon, listening to the hearts of black fathers. And I have a really terrific cover for that. And I can't wait to show it to you, but in just one afternoon, listening to lots of men, listening to lots of twins, listening to lots of millennials are all on Amazon. The stories are great. And what I told somebody last week when she bought the twins, I particularly said, don't try to read it all at one time. Just read a story here, a story there. Same thing with the millennials, same thing with the men and absorb it. It's, it's so, they're so real and they're so extraordinary when you listen to people talk about, uh, like in the millennials, one of the women could not have children, but her, her sister could, and her sister was pregnant with a third child and couldn't afford it. So the sister had the child and the sister that I interviewed adopted him. I mean, they're, and they're both millennials. There are some really cool stories, and I would encourage you to open up your heart and, you know, go get one, get two, get all, give it as a gift. The holidays are coming up, and enjoy, enjoy reading about people. Enjoy understanding, you know, some of what you'll understand about the twins and the unbelievable connection that twins have that I keep saying, but if they can have it, we all can have that sixth sense. We are from one soul anyway. So if the twins can be that connected and, you know, have such unconditional love for each other, well, then so can the rest of us. And the opioid uh, book will be out soon, I hope. I'm just following Jay a little bit more and I want to follow him through the next couple of weeks and see where we take it. And then the book should be about ready to be edited. And then after that, in just one afternoon, listening to the hearts of black fathers. So if you know anyone that is a black daddy who is, you know, 17, 18, 19 years old, and a, and a you know, someone who would like to talk about their experience as a young dad, please share them with me, share me with them. You can reach out to me at Marilyn at MarilynShannon.com. I'd love to interview them. They can be anonymous if they like. I'm not, I have no problem with that. It's more about their story. So everyone, it's been a pleasure being with you today. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and listening and observing and taking a bit of this with you wherever you go. Take a bit of this non-judgment, compassion, gratitude, chicken, love. You're not alone. We're all in this together. And, and that, I don't know, got to have a sense of humor with it. And we're all in this together. So have a marvelous, marvelous week. Next week, we have a very interesting guest on, and I know he will be here. I love you all. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye.
You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.